Let's get started. So we'll read it, we'll, we'll say each paragraph with the lettering as it goes through, just to help people find where we are. So Aleph starts with Amra HaNashama. So the Nashama who's asking the questions, she begins with her question. Ta'avasi v'ratoni, my, my desire and my, my will is lihisyashev al-ktsas devarim, to understand, to be yishuv means like settled, to be settled in certain ideas. Me'osam shenemar bahem, the ideas about which we say in the Torah, v'hashevose el levavecha, you have to settle it in your heart, ki Hashem hu helukim. You have to settle in your heart that God is the God, Hashem is the only God. I'm talking about things here that are fundamentals of our belief. That every person, based on their ability, has to understand them, has to chase after them, and try his best to understand what these things mean. In common speak, why am I here? What am I doing here? Right, well, you're right. He hasn't told us yet what those questions are, but right. the, the questions are going to be those things that a person needs to in order to know what they're doing here, needs mm-hmm. to understand these things. Yeah. So it says the Seichel, Beis, Amar Seichel, okay, Ano Panayich Mudaos, what are your questions? What do you have in mind? What's, what's on your mind? Hine Ha'ikrim Him Yud Gimel, we know that there are 13 principles of faith that the Rambam enumerated for us and are printed in all the Sidurim, and you know, that's like, it forms the backbone of our belief. Valeza Mehem Tirzi Lisbonin, so what, which of those 13 are you wanting to understand? This, this is the, uh, the Seichel talking now? That was the Seichel, right, responding to the Neshama. <coughs> mm-hmm. So it says the Neshama. Mm-hmm. And she ma- wants to clarify something over here, because we, we, we have an idea in Judaism that a person who doesn't accept all 13 of these principles is considered a heretic. That's what the Rambam writes, and that's basically the accepted position by the later generations, that in order to be considered a believing Jew, a member of the spiritual collective of Judaism. So it's not just being born into it, but there's a, a person has to actually have certain beliefs. They have to maintain certain concepts as a part of their belief. And if a person wouldn't accept these things or wouldn't believe in them, so that would constitute a person being a heretic. So the Neshama wants to make sure that she's not being heretical here. She says, I want to clarify that all 13 of these principles, don't get me wrong, I accept them, I believe them, they are true, you know, without any doubt. Like I would give my life for them, right? If somebody came and said, you know, uh, if you, you know, do you, if you know, if, if deny the coming of the Messiah, or I'll kill you, right? So she would give up her life for, for that belief, right? That she believes in them. However, aval yesh mehem shehem umasimli vigam muvanim. There are those of the, them that I believe them and I understand them, like they make sense to me and I they're settled with me. V'yesh mehem shehem umasimli be'emuna. However, there are those of them that I believe because it's what I have to believe. But I don't really understand them, hmm. right? So again, I would, I would give up my life on and all thirteen of those. I believe them and I accept them and I know that they're the truth because that's in what we've been told in principle. Mm-hmm. But there's some of them that I make sense also. They also make sense to me. He's going to say, for example, you know, that God created the universe. That that makes sense. I get it. I believe it. That makes a lot of sense. But there's some of them that I believe because I know I have to. But they don't really make sense to me. So the Seichel says, okay, valid. And, and it's like a person saying, I, I, I get it, I'm here, and there's like a Hashem and all the rest of it, but, 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 but there's so many things, so many dynamics that I don't get, exactly. and, and I want clarity and inspiration. Exactly. There are bits and pieces of it that I don't, I don't understand. So Dalit, the Seichel responds, Okay, so which are the ones that you just accept on faith, and which are the ones that you understand as well? So the Neshama continues. Hey, Amr Neshama. So if we count them out, we're going to go through, there's about like uh, nine of them that the Neshama gets and understands and has settled with, and then like four of them that the Neshama has a hard time with. So let's go through them. Hine, Metzius Hashem, the existence of God. Yichudo, that there's only one God. Nitzchiyuso, that that God is eternal. Right? Veheyoso chutz min haguf v'chom mikreaguf, that he has no physical... Um, uh, um, what's the word? No physical... Shape, form? Yeah, shape, no form, no physical... Um, there's an English word for it. Apparition? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, maybe you'll cut that out. I don't remember that. Yeah, he also chutz min aguf aguf. He has no physical form and he's not affected by anything physical. Chidush ha'olam, that's number five, right? That the world was created from nothing. Nevuah, the fact that there was prophecy, that Hashem 
um, uh, uh, spoke with man and conveyed to man what he wanted. Nevuas Moshe, specifically that the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu is uh, the prime prophet and no other prophet can counter or contradict anything he said. Torah min hashemayim min the fact that Torah came from heaven and it's eternal, shalot that it will never change. So these, all of these, he says, kol anima menes vani mevinasam ve'eni These all make sense to me. It makes sense that there's a one God. It makes mm-hmm. sense that he conveyed to man through the Torah and Moshe Rabbeinu what it is that he expects from us and what he wants us to do over here in the world. All of that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. However, ha Mm. How Hashem controls the world, onesh, the concept of reward and punishment, bias hamashiach, the fact that there's going to be a Messiah that's going to come, utchias amesim, and the fact that the dead are going to live again. So these four concepts, ma'amenesani vadai mipnei chovas adas. Again, I want to make it clear: I'm not a heretic. I believe these because mm. I know I have to. Just don't get them. But I don't get them. Aval hayisa chafetza lizbar behem svarash eshkotpa. But I would really rather understand them in a way that I could be settled. That I could understand and be be settled about them and not not be confused about them. Why do you think the Ramchal dealt with this these particular four? Because what he's basically basically doing, he's setting up a situation that must have reflected either the society at the time, and I wonder how now that would relate to other people. Like I believe, I believe, I believe, but wh- how is the, the Hamas and us and war and where's this going? And That's exactly what he's going to say, yeah. right? Exactly, that, that the, he knows these things are said, but when you look in the world, it doesn't look like right. this is what's happening. He's going to explain that right now. So, Vav, six, Amr HaSeichel, okay, Mahu Miskash Bazen, what's the matter? What, you know, what's difficult about these? <laughs> so it says the Neshama, Zion, Right? All the things that go on in the world, all world events that happen. Mm-hmm. It looks like the opposite of Hashkacha, right? We look at things like what happened uh, on the Simchas Torah, October 7th. We look at things like the Holocaust, right? And it doesn't look like there's somebody in control, right? Right? It certainly, A, it doesn't look like anybody's in control, and B, it doesn't look like it's heading anywhere. It doesn't look like it's a part of some plan. And the Jews aren't particularly favorable. Uh, exactly. Well, what does Hashem want from us, and where is He taking us? And what's the end of all of this? It would seem that it's just like beyond human ability to understand. Like we know God is so intelligent and so infinitely smart and infinitely wise. It would seem that he's operating in a way that is just simply out of bounds, just yeah. out of our ability to possibly have any understanding. Mm-hmm. I want for you to teach me a straight path to understand how all of this stuff is sensible, like it's straight, like it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Without moving one way or the other, left or right, I want to be able to have clarity on these things and understand a clear path of understanding. So eight, ches, amr ha but you're asking here some of the deepest questions. Right? You're asking like why bad things happen to good people, why good things happen to bad people. Mm-hmm. We know that even the greatest uh, philosophers and even the prophets had difficulty with this. Struggle. Right? This is to me always one of the most powerful things that Chazal tell us that who is the prophet, who is the one who asked Hashem the question of Tzadik Baralo, it wasn't Elisha Hanavi, it wasn't Aaron Okoi, it was Moshe Rabbeinu, right? The person who understood God better than anybody else who ever walked this earth, earth the person who literally spoke face to face with God yeah. himself, he is the one who asks Hashem the question of how did the righteous suffer? How does Tzadik Baralo happen? And right, and that, that's very validating, right? It tells us that that's a question mm-hmm. that's good. It's a real question. Hit everybody at some point in their lives. Has to have that question. Right. All right, so we'll continue. Mr. Shem, we'll continue next time and see the answers.